this is a film that that uh, captures wonderfully those sort of tender and, and awkward moments of young love and and also that that notion of the the, the loneliness of the long distance relationship. And I don't know whether when it came to you and Ben putting the script together, whether there was material that you were drawing on that you sort of experienced this, or whether or you felt we can bring something new to this uh, particular genre. Yeah, when Ben and I were attacking writing this, we were really we really wanted to make a unique. Uh, contemporary love story that really felt true to us and experiences that we've been through in our lives. So that was that was the goal in, in, in attacking it. Talking to the beautiful Felicity, she just mentioned uh, well, Breaking the Waves was one to the reference point. I think Why Tu Mama Tembien was mentioned. And yep. I don't know whether there were certain, and, and in Hollywood, stuff like Going the Distance has sort of tapped into this a little bit, but mm -hmm. I don't know whether there were certain cer definite sort of uh, inspirations for you when it came to the movie front. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, Breaking the Waves and Need to Mama Tommy M were, were definitely uh, uh, tonal references as far as the filmmaking is concerned. Um, but as far as the actual story itself, I mean, we, we wanted to try to do something uh, unique and uh, something that, that felt like uh, was ours. It takes, a, it takes a fair set of testicles to go for a plot device where it's not like, you know, these star-crossed lovers don't have a warring family, they don't have an iceberg heading their way. They've, no. they've got a, a student visa violation in, the, in their way, which is such a slight kind of almost, you know, an irritant rather than there's a, a great big, you know, uh, keeping us apart, there's a great big obstacle. That was, I mean, obviously something that you were deli uh, motivated by because it isn't a typical kind of, you know, family feud. It isn't a, a big, big... Divide. Yeah, it's, it's almost as if uh, in this film the antagonist and the protagonist are both love because at the end of the day these two young lovers make a, make a naive poor choice because of love. So in, in, in a sense their feelings for each other are, and end up uh, uh, getting in the way of, of them being together and, and a poor decision they've made and who hasn't been in a relationship and, and made an illogical decision because, because of love. So I feel like uh, hopefully audiences will be able to resonate with that. It must have been a pretty uh, crazy night in, in Sundance when it premiered on that Saturday that suddenly there was frenzy for 16 hours of, of people trying to get the rights to this film. And I don't know for you whether it, it was all a little bit too surreal or whether it was just a joy knowing that people like Harvey Weinstein were, were breathing down your neck trying to uh, get the rights to this. Eventually Paramount got it for four million, but I don't know whether that night was, was surreal or whether it was just all joy or a little bit terrifying. It was everything. It still <laughs> hasn't sunk in yet. I, I don't think until the movie opens it will sink in. I mean, it was such a personal movie that we made in a bubble. Uh, so, so bringing it to Sundance and sharing it with audiences was, we had no idea what to expect and, and to have the response that we had and and to have to go through that bidding war, it was totally surreal because it's sort of something you dream of and think of as a filmmaker. You want people to want your movie, and you hope that you 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 can pick from any distributor. But it's it is a surreal experience, but it was so special and uh, something I'll never forget. I know that uh, when it came to your leads, Anton Yelchin and, and uh, Felicity Jones, and also with Jennifer Lawrence and and. Uh, with uh, Charlie Bewley, you kind of gave them a, a lot of room to impro uh, improvise. And I don't know if that would, would uh, inv invariably change the script or whether it was always pretty solid where you were going here, whether they would throw up things that maybe you hadn't uh, expected and, and altered the uh, tone of the film. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it was a, every day was a surprise and every day was evolving. But the, uh, the story and the emotional beats were solid and we knew what those were. And it was just a matter of how we were going to execute those. And What's so special about all the actors in the film is that they really lost themselves in the characters and so many moments came to them and the environment was so intimate that the film just sort of grew out of that organic process. I was thinking too that, that, that you're shooting with Felicity again, you're, you're, the non-title project you're doing right now with her, yeah. but the fact that you're only 28 and this, that'll be your fourth feature, you did the two shorts as well, it seems, I don't know whether you hit the ground running, whether there was, you know, most people sort of struggle in the undergrowth for about 10 years before they get the chance to step behind a camera and make their own film. Was it just a determination from, from an early stage that you said, well, this is the way I'm going to plan my career. I'm going to actually make a movie first and not sort of go through the long climb. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I you know, I just uh, believed in setting deadlines and, you know, really said to myself, if I don't have enough money to do it, I'm, I'm going to do it anyways. And, uh, you know, I was just so passionate about making the films that uh, uh, I really just didn't want anything to get in the way. So I've been really fortunate that I, I've had some people believe in me and want me to make these movies. So... Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, I feel very fortunate. But with the, I was going to say Moon Pie was your first film in 2006, and then I think with the last two, with Spooner and, and Douchebag in 2009, 2010, there was a good sort of reaction within, I think, Sundance and yeah. places like that. Do you feel you've got to a point now, especially with the reaction to this film, that there won't be a struggle, or will there always be a struggle if you're going to be making films that might be considered left field or won't be you know, completely mainstream? Yeah, well, it's funny. I think making any movie is it's a, it's a struggle, no matter no matter how much money you have or what. I mean, it, it's, it's just hard, you know. Uh, 
But but uh, you know, uh, coming with bigger budgets now and, and being making bigger films, uh, it's the same problem. It's just on a different scale. So, uh, but it it is it is exciting that uh, you know people are believing in this process of filmmaking and 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 and, and, and with douchebag and with like crazy uh, financiers can see and feel that it that it is a tangible way to make a film and that's uh, really special to me because a few years ago n nobody understood the process and believed in it. I know that for a sensitive artist you don't think about such things but certainly Hollywood and studios think about such things. This film comes out on October 23rd in the States and it'll be out February uh, 3rd or, or, uh, in Ireland and the UK but obviously that's in time for the award ceremony in America and, and the fact that it got such a great reception at Sundance won the Grand Jury Prize for Dramatic Film and Felicity got a, a, a prize as well. I don't know whether you dare even think when nobody's around that this might actually work in, in, uh, when it comes to the Golden Globes and the Oscars and beyond. Does that uh, ever cross your mind? You know, not not really, to be honest. I mean, you know, we're focusing on, on, on opening the movie right now and sharing it with audiences, and at the end of the day, if, if as many people see it as possible, that's what we're concerned with, and if anything else happens, it's gravy. But right now, we're just excited to open it and share it with audiences. I know you, you pop up in a, a documentary, Kingdom Come, which is charting the first-time filmmaker... Daniel Gill's sort of attempt to, to get a film made and I don't know whether that's a sort of a warning or whether it's a, a positive sort of hey anybody can do this you should go make a film yeah from what I've seen of the movie it's an inspirational tale about about uh, following your dreams and making what you want to make so um, yeah I think it's an inspiration I haven't seen the final film I feel a song coming on did you want, maybe you yeah. want to sing, maybe <laughs> maybe just sing, sing a bit about it. it just feels like it would yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even just jazz hands <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but well done, son. Wonderful film. Yeah. Thanks for checking it out. Oh, yeah. Well yeah, done. Yeah, no, yeah. no, it's really sweet. <laughs>